this year, 2024, more people are physically casting ballots than ever before in human history. Some 4 billion people around the world have the entitlement to vote, but a number of those elections are not free or fair as we would recognize it. What's happening in China? What's happening in Russia? Uh, there have been already elections in Pakistan and Bangladesh that fall well short of what we would consider a free and fair election. When I was a member of the European Parliament, I was sometimes an election monitor. And I sometimes monitored elections in banana republics. I don't say that slightingly. I mean, literally, republics that were dependent on bananas, specifically Ecuador uh, and uh, El Salvador. And one of the things that you learn as an election observer is that it's very difficult actually to steal votes. You can disqualify candidates on technicalities. You can deny them access to media. But the kind of straightforward vote theft that Mayor was describing is extremely unusual. And the reason it's unusual is because you can't do it with everyone knowing about it. And once everyone knows about it, you are then forced into repressive measures in order to make the theft stick, which is why Pakistan this year, since the election, in the run up to it and since, has been in something very close to what the rest of us would call martial law, a suspension of normal judicial process in order to sustain that outcome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not something to which we can be indifferent as a friend and ally of that country. All of us in those countries to which we are most connected by kinship and custom, by habit and history, by law and language. Uh, Pakistan is an old uh, friend and a close ally, and all of us want to see a situation where the majority of the population have buy-in to the result, where there, uh, there are elections where candidates are not disqualified and where their confidence is thereby restored.